got a 510 Rodec engine, another of the real big power plants that make a lot of horsepower. James Carr out of Trenton, New Jersey with a solo run has successfully completed it and will move on. You get a look at it again on the replay. Never satisfied. Outstanding run. Didn't have to race anybody, but you really want to still put down a good time. We got a lot more fun in the sand. Sand Dragsters coming your way here on Motor Madness. And another reminder that on March 5th, we've got a very, very special show. An off-road show. It's going to be great. U.S. Off-Road Championship Series hitting sunny San Diego for what's going to be an awesome night. All across the board, you don't want to miss it. Some of the greatest competition that Pace Motorsports has to offer. Several classes, huge fields of stadium lights and pro quads and thunder bikes. You're going to see it all on Motor Madness March 5th. Don't miss it. All right, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. All right, now we talked about it on last week's show, and safety is back again. This week, we're talking about RII, Remote Ignition Interrupt. You guessed it. The section is, what's that all about? Hey, look. Seriously, it wants to flip over at a pace show. There's always an official running to the back of the truck. What they're doing is pulling this ring here. This is going to enable any power to go into any unit and shut the fuel off. So between the two units, there is no power or no fuel can go through this truck while it's on its side or it's on its top. That's the RII, the remote ignition interrupter. Before we, we pull the line, you see the drivers putting their arms outside the windows. What they're doing is making sure that we're not touching nothing so they can shut the truck off by remote control in case anything happens. It's another one of the safety features that keeps the driver safe and the spectator safe to make it a safe sport for everybody, for the driver and the spectators. What that does, it uh, shuts the truck down at a touch of a button if the truck's incapacitated in any sort. Um, if it's out of control, if uh, throttle sticks or whatever, we can shut that down at any time. This is the tether cable that's hooked to the rear of the vehicle. When you see us come to the line, you'll see us pull up and stick both hands out the window. That's telling the men behind us to come up and hook this to the rear of the vehicle. They have two switches in the end of the truck that this is hooked to that's shorter than the track. The track's 120 feet long tonight. These will shut our engines off. When the truck reaches 110 feet, it will shut the engines off and then we're on our own then to get them stopped because of the fact that if we go out with full power, we cannot control them and they're stopping them. So this is the main safety feature to shut the engines off prior to us leaving the track under full power. United States Hot Rod Association action always puts safety as a priority, and that was a great piece to show you, both in monster trucks and in sand drags, how they can make sure those engines get shut down and make sure nobody gets in trouble, or at least in as little trouble as possible. Back down to our next round in our sand drag competition. Red Devil, Never Satisfied, David Hunt and James Carr. Should be an outstanding race. We saw Never Satisfied look really good in the first round, and Red Devil, David Hunt cut a pretty good line as well. So this ought to be a dandy as they match up side-by-side. Side. Pace Motorsports action from San Antonio. Wow, that's pretty close. <laughs> it was a wheel. That was yeah, the difference. a wheel. Never satisfied, though. Coming out on top. And that modified me. I don't even know what you call that. <laughs> but nonetheless, what you call it right now is fast. Fast and a winner. Obsession and Spider up next. Bill Hazelwood and uh, Chris Ballard ready to go. It is Hazelwood who will be on that outside lane. In the first round, Obsession cut the best lap. So we're going to see if Obsession can continue to stay at the top of the list. Obsession based out of Red Oak, Texas. Nearby, that 99 Dodge. Well, the Spider 3 is another Texas truck as well out of Sherman. And the Spider pulls it off. I thought Obsession would be the favorite in that I'm race. Really surprised that Hazelwood out was able to pull that out. Bill Hazelwood, as you said, out of Sherman, Texas. And the Spider 3. Got a great hole shot. And again, that's so critical in the Thunderbody sand drags. You have got to get off the line, and you got to get off the line quick. That's exactly what the Spider did. And the crowd loves it here. They're into their sand drags, monster trucks, and quad wars, because that's what we got. Coming up next, a Motor Madness Monster Jam. Car crushing.
Racing California Carnage is what you've got next weekend when the U.S. Hot Rod Monster Jam Superstars slam it up in Salinas. Monster Jam is the event of the spring at Salinas Fairgrounds. And if you haven't snagged your tickets yet, now's the time. And it doesn't get easier than this. Just log on at PaceMotorsports.com. Then get to the show May 15th and 16th or make it a mega monster weekend and go to both shows. You've seen the monsters on TNN Motor Madness Monster Jam. Now see them live and larger than life with 10,000 metal mashing pounds of fun and fury. And there is some exciting events ahead, and you can tell we've got an exciting one going on here. We'd like you to meet one of our monster truck drivers, driver of Cyborg. If, after spending a week on the road with your sweetie, you can still stand the sight of that person, you should probably stay together. We uh, visit home, <laughs> so we're in the holler, you know, three, four days a week. We're home for two days, and we're back again. So we pretty well stay all year long. We try to stay on the road all year long. And this is our business, and that's, you know, if we're, if we're not on the road, we're not making money. How do you like to spend 40 weeks a year together? It, uh, we put a lot of time in together, and thank God we like each other. Because <laughs> <laughs> things can get very hectic. But she knows what I need, I know what she needs, and, and we've been doing it long enough that we, we kind of click, you know. Jack and Rocky Coburna drive and maintain Cyborg together. From their second residence in Little Coolia, Texas, they travel the country together. Well, the relationship started uh, with the idea that I knew what he was doing for a business. So I had to go into the relationship with the commitment that I was ready to go on the road, too. So I did. And we do real well. What happens when things don't go so well on the track? I have a lot of respect for what he does out there, and uh, I'm not in his shoes, so I can't make that call. But I can I can surely chew my fingernails in the process. That, that's my right, <laughs> is to chew my nails, I guess. Rocky may chew them down to the quick, but she and Jack are committed to racing cyborg. There's no uh, set state. I'm going to go until I have no more enjoyment in the sport. And I really enjoy the racing. I love it. I mean, I eat racing, I sleep racing. I mean, I, I race at night when I'm sleeping. It's Any fun. advice for newlywed monster truck families? We kind of try to outthink each other sometimes and get us in trouble, but <laughs> we do pretty good. So, well, Jack would let you drive the truck? Only in the parking lot. <laughs> Ain't got quite that far yet. Soon I hope. I keep trying. I keep talking and talking. It's like we, we need a, another woman driver in this sport. Just a neat couple, you know. It really gives you a great opportunity there to kind of see behind the truck, behind the wheel, what's going on and getting it here. What I find interesting, though, is you've got a great couple like that. They get along so well. You know, they're in love and like each other so much, work together so well. Well, we're about to go down now here in a minute, and I think, and see people who don't like each other too well, because we're about to go back to quad war yeah. racing. We are talking about St. Louis and San Antonio, heat two. St. Louis in the red, one heat one. The San Antonio, the yellow team, the home team, trying to defend home turf here. And if you've missed any of the quad wars, again, the, the only thing that matters is the one quad that wins. And those are the out front guys. It is Jay Lucas for St. Louis and Paul Gass for San Antonio. Everybody else's job is the block. Remember, it was a last lap move by Lucas that won it last time, so you can expect it to go to the wire, although this is a great start for San Antonio. Paul Gass just comes off the throttle, or gets the throttle right off the bat. It looks like one of the St. Louis guys decided to modify the course a little bit. I'm not sure where he's going. We've got exactly. everybody else straight now. Now we got the two guys out in front trying to everything they can do to try to get some leverage, and you see him swinging wide on the turn. That was gas of San Antonio. Indeed, the captains go to the front, as you would expect once again, but right now, St. Louis, with two positions out of the top three, really in a good spot. Not only do they have the lead, but your team captain, Jay Lucas, has got some help to try and block Paul Gass of San Antonio as he looks to make his move. You see them looking over their shoulders there. Uh, teammates are setting up moves, trying to set up the block. And over that tough roof section, that's very difficult to do. I gotta tell you, that was a great move by Gass. He kind of just was able to slide in between the two San Antonio, or the two St. Louis quads, and I think the two St. Louis teammates were trying to work together to cut him off. It didn't work, but now they're back in front. Again, it was the red team, 
Bay Lewis, who's down a bit in the standings, down to number six in the standings, who pulled off the upset in the first team to try to do it again here. Well, they came in here tonight gunning for a sweep. That's what they want. That's what will pull them up in the standings. And they're really in great shape right here because they've got Gas's number with two quads right around it. But Gas continues to fight him off. He's got the lead on the final lap. Yep, well, the white flag is out. Well, right there, though, he lost the lead in the turn, and now he's got to fight both of those St. Louis competitors. There's still time as they're coming toward the wire. We'll see as they take those final turns, you see the white flag is waving there. Here comes the checkered, and indeed, Gass is able to pull it off on the last turn. He had two St. Louis guys around him, and he just out-muscled them. Great run for team captain Paul Gass. Winning on the home turf in San Antonio. And San Antonio has now pulled even in this quad match thanks to their captain, Paul Gass, who showed a lot of ability and a lot of talent. Got more fun in the sand of sand drags coming your way next. Stay tuned. Time now for another off-road update to Houston we go. It's an exciting action. Always exciting action wherever the U.S. Off-Road Championship Series goes. You can see in the stadium lights, Joe Price had trouble keeping it on two wheels, but he did get the victory. You'll see him coming around to the checkered right now. Price able to get it done despite that problem. Suppose we could say the price is right. It was there. Yeah, it was. Super modified buggies and Corey Withrell has really been on a roll. Gets it done again as he comes away the winner in Houston. And you want to talk about something wild, the stadium sport trucks are insane. And this is some of the stuff we're going to see on March 5th. Who are we doing? From San Diego. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Up on the side, Jerry Welch who actually flipped his truck. Woo! There is action on every part of the course when you see the U.S. Off-Road Series come to town. And again, we can't wait to get them here on Motor Madness. Uh, we, again, we will have them on March the 5th. Here in the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, it is time to move back to Sand Drags. Foolish pleasure, Shay Clark on the outside lane there, Quicksand. She'll be going up against Quicksand. Now remember, how you determine the winner in the Thunderbody Sand Drags is each truck gets two runs and the fastest lap of the night's the winner. So right now, Obsession at 2.017 is sitting on top, and obviously Chris Pelea of Red Oak, Texas, hopes nobody can get under that 2.017. Get ready to watch the tree lights. Oh, man, there's a problem on the start. Foolish Pleasure is going to win. Yeah, she got a nice-looking run, and Shay Clark had a great run right there. However, not going to be quick enough to knock Obsession out of the top spot. She still is going to finish among the leaders. And as you can see, it was a terrible run for Quicksand. Just couldn't keep her straight. Looks like he was in Quicksand. Mind games with Dan Brown, Greg Jones, and Magnum Force. We'll see what they can do here. Again, watch the Christmas tree lights when they come down, as you'll see it. And there it goes, green. And, oh, look out, in trouble. And off the course, automatic disqualification right there for mind games. I mean, Dan Brown just lost it. Luckily, he didn't get in any worse trouble than he did. And Magnum Force, it's been a tough night for Greg Jones all the way around. They'll, he'll get credit for the lap, but it was 4.9 seconds, nowhere near the top. And neither one of those are going to uh, compete or challenge for the win in the sand drags here in San Antonio tonight. Well, Obsession is going to have only one more bullet to dodge, but first, look at this. Mind Games really, if he gets up on those cars, he's in real trouble, so it was lucky for him he was able to get it straightened out once he veered off course. And we got Fat Cat with a solo run here. Out of Bethlehem, Georgia, a pretty good run, but it's not going to be enough. Matter of fact, a 2.8 won't even make it, it uh, looks like, into the top five. So, Boulay and Obsession out of Red Oak, Texas, despite Fat Cat's run here, Able to come away as the Thunderbody Sand Drag Champion. I know the San Antonio fans love it. You can see it's a spider. Bill Hazelwood comes in second. Never satisfied. Good, good run in third. And look at the lady, Shea Clark, with a strong fourth place finish in San Antonio. Red Devil comes home fifth in his fat cap, Magnum Force, Mind Games, and Quick Sand in our Sand Drag final result of the competition here in San Antonio. Watching the Thunderbody Sand Drags, you saw everybody really had to cut that light really quickly. Let's find out more about the Christmas trees on how it works. Those lights over yonder, they're pointing to the inside of the track. That way there's nothing over there to get run over other than just a little light bulb. The inside has got the photo cell that receives the light. When we roll the wheel into it, 
It'll 